God for being here today, amen. Jesus. And Father, we ask you that you prepare us, dear God, 
Oh, in the name of Jesus, for the growth, dear God, that I know that is coming. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, dear God, for your blessing, dear God, for your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Can we give you praise, oh God? Yes, Thank you, Father. We ask you blessing upon dear God, those that are sick in their bodies, those that yeah. in the old folk home, dear God, those in the homes of the bereaved families throughout the land and country. We ask you blessing upon them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And not, dear God, forgetting our dear God about our praise team, dear God, in the name of Jesus, but that our musician, oh God, we thank you for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what they are doing in the ministry, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for your beacons, oh God. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Those that are standing at the door, oh God, the ushers, oh God, we thank you for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
trust God with your baby? Amen. Don't you trust God with them? Don't turn them over to them. Why are you losing sleep over that child? Stop playing. Y'all, chapter 18. I'm not going to be before you long. We don't praise God. Amen. 
Glory to God. But God wants us to hear this word today, and we're going to go to 2 Kings 18th chapter, starting with verse number 3. Amen. After we read this, don't put your Bibles away because we're going to go to Numbers after that. But it's going to be later on, so just let's just focus on 2 Kings first. 2 Kings chapter 18. To honor the Lord's word, if you would please stand upon your feet if you're able. Thank you, Father. 2 Kings 18 chapter verses 3 through 7. When you found it, say amen. Amen. Yes. Second Kings. I'll be reading from the King James Version, the 18th chapter, verse number three. It says, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the bronze and serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days, the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord God commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may take your seats. Amen. From those scriptures comes the topic, transition requires change. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Transition requires change. Amen. My brothers and sisters, while I was still in the military, right around the time I, I turned 40, and I went to the doctor, you know, you have to have your annual physical every year. You go to the doctor and I had some tests done, you know. Like I said, I was in the military. I was in good shape, much better shape than I'm in now. <laughs> but I could run, you know, pretty well. And I exercised every day. They, the Army made sure of that. And I went to the doctor, and the doctor did the test, did the blood test and everything. And the doctor um, said, all right, you know, Sarah Green looked good, everything looks good, blah, blah, blah. Um, she said, I, I just noticed something in your levels. And I'm like, okay, well, hey, what could it be, right? Could harm me. Um, she's like, I noticed that you're pre-diabetic. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? You know, I exercise all the time. I do what I'm supposed to do, right? Whatever. She said, yeah, well, your numbers are close. You're pretty close to being diabetic. And I'm like, wow. Because then you start thinking about all the things that you have to deal with as being a diabetic. And she said, your number is you're about two digits away. And I was like, my Lord. I mean, that's that could be a, a fried grilled cheese sandwich. I mean, who knows? But I was just thinking about that, and I said, wow. But she told me, but you can, you can reverse that, thank you. You can reverse that by watching what you eat and exercise regularly. I said, well, I've been exercising. <clears throat> she said, but how's your diet? And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I'm like, that, that's something else. But she said, well, you have to make a change in your diet if you want better results. And I said, wow. In other words, I had to be willing to change, to make a change, or I was gonna have full-blown diabetes, which can lead to other things, as y'all know. It can lead to amputation, which can also lead to death. And many people that we know may be in the same situation some are so stuck in the way that they do things that, you know, they, they, they love what they love to eat. And they won't stop eating those things because it, it tastes so good. And we get so stuck that we don't realize or we forget that if we don't change, we will die. 
We must change what we eat. We must rid our diets of fried foods, fatty foods, salt, and other things. We must learn, my brothers and sisters, to go for walks, to exercise a little, become more active when we go through our daily activities. Now, does that mean we gotta go get a membership at the gym? No. Some things that we need to do, when you go to the grocery store, park further away. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> it's always plenty of spaces out there, but we'll try to cram in a tight squeeze just to get closer to the store. But if you would just park your vehicle out there and just walk a little bit extra. If we would just park in the parking spaces furthest from the job. Amen. Amen. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say, <"Ooh." laughs> Even walk around your house a few times. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Walk to the mailbox. Instead of waiting until you come home to check the mail. We must be willing to change in order for our health to transition. Amen. Amen. The word transition is the process or period of changing from one state or condition to another. So in order for a transition to occur, there must be a change. Right. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, my brothers and sisters, God wants to move us from one level to the next. God wants to put us in a, in, a, in a better place, spiritually, I mean. But you have to be willing to change. Some of us are stuck in where we are spiritually because we're not willing to change. Some of us are stuck spiritually because we are not willing to change. Amen. All right, I'll say it again. Some of us are stuck Spiritually, mm -hmm. because we, not, not everybody around you, Amen. because we just will not change. Mm -hmm. What is it that God is telling you to change? What is it that God wants us to change? For some of us, it could be reevaluating our relationship with him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Is he indeed first in your life? Yes. Just looking at yourself. Huh? Don't, don't worry about your spouse. I'm yes. talking about you. Yes. Don't worry about your kids, your mama, your daddy. Let's worry about you. Is he first in your life? If he's first in your life, then you won't mind when you wake up in the morning telling him thank you. Amen. If he's first in your life, you won't mind during the work day or your day telling him thank you. If he's first, you won't even mind before you close your eyes at night. Amen. Telling the Lord, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. He may be telling some of us to reevaluate the bond that we have with God. Mm -hmm. When people see you, do they see God? Yes. When people hear you talk, do they hear one who speaks as the Lord? When people feel your presence, do they feel the presence of God? Yeah. Do you commune with God? Do you study the scriptures? Yeah. In order to get the approval from God, you must study his word. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study yes. to show thyself what? Approved. approved. That's what the word says. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved unto whom? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing what? The word of truth. In order to be approved unto God, you have to study. Crack open that Bible. It's your prayer life. One that's pleasing to God. And I'm not talking about the usual, vain, repetitious prayers. I'm talking about the ones that move God when you pray. I'm talking about when you Start praying to God. God's like, oh, yes. Yes. I'm talking about the conversation that you have with God. How is that life for you? Spiritually, we have got to stop just going to church and be the church. Amen. 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 We got to stop just 
coming in here and then leave. Yeah. Be who God called you to be. Do what God called you to do. Amen. He says, do it unto me yeah. as if you're doing it unto me. Yeah. That's what the word tells us. Everything yeah. that you do. You sing, you sing it as if you sing unto the Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't worry about nobody else. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. When you start praying, you're praying to God. I'm yes, not praying Lord. for your amens. I'm praying yes, to God. Yes, Lord. When you preach the word, you preach yes. as if Jesus Christ himself is sitting on the front people. Yes, sir. Yeah. You yes, do sir. everything as if you're doing it for the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Whatever it is, do it. Transition, my brothers and sisters, transition, it requires change. You cannot go to the level of God unless you change. Amen. You cannot go where God wants to take you unless you change. You cannot go where God wants to take you unless you change. You cannot go where God wants you to go Unless you change. Transition, my brothers and sisters. It requires change. Why do you think the word change is in the Bible so much? Why do you think the Bible talks about having a renewal of your mind? Yes, Lord. Why does the Bible say you must be born again? Yes, yes. All of these. Words represent change. Amen. There's got to be a change in your heart. The Bible says that we'll be changed from mortal to what? Immortality. Yes. Oh, so I say, oh, what a change All right. that's come over me. Yes, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. I don't know yes. about you, but I'm so glad yes, Lord. that the Lord saw fit yes. to change me. I'm so glad that God changed my heart. Yeah. I'm so glad that God changed the words that come out of my mouth now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm so glad that God has changed my mind yeah. so that I can have a mind yeah. as Christ. Yeah. I'm so glad that the evidence are in the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. The evidence of the change. Yeah. People ought to see the evidence. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody else. What's your evidence? 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 The lifestyle that you live. Amen. 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 Somebody cut in front of you on the highway. What's your first reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they driving in the left lane? That's the pass lane. Get over there. You too slow. Y'all know y'all don't see that. What a Right. We throwing them the peace sign backwards without one of our fingers. But then you've been changed. Amen. Oh, he working on me, Pastor. He did. In our text, y'all, Hezekiah, he was made king of Israel. Yeah. In verse 3, it says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Hezekiah didn't care about what the people said. Amen. Hezekiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Listen, I got to let you know something. During your change, during your transitional period, there may be some people that you're going to encounter who feel different about your change. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There are going to be some people that you used to roll with all the time. Yeah. And when you start changing, they're going to be like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Amen. How long are you going to last? <laughs> Amen. It says, they may be your friend. They may even be your family. Amen. 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 They may even be your church. Yes. But are you here to please them? 
Or are you here to please God? Come on. I don't know about you, but I lost a lot of friends Amen. when I got saved. Amen. A lot of people. They didn't want to call me no more. Amen. They wanted to hang out everywhere. They would go here, go there. And I started getting saved. They were like, no, nah, man, we ain't. Nah. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. Verse 3. It says Hezekiah did what was right. So I know you're like, well, what did he do? Oh, easy. Verse 4 says what he did. He removed the high places. The Bible says he broke the images, cut down the groves, he broke the pieces, he broke, excuse me, break in pieces the brass serpent that Moses had made. For in those days the children of Israel, they burned incense to it. So they made it a they worshipped it. I want y'all to go to Numbers for me. The book of Numbers. Go to the book of Numbers. It's very close to the beginning. Chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I want y'all to see this. Numbers chapter 21. Verse number 4. We're going to start with verse number 4. Numbers chapter 1 verse number 4. I want y'all to look at this. Numbers chapter 4. You got it? Amen? Amen. Still looking? It's all right. We'll wait because I want y'all to read. I want y'all to see this. Numbers chapter 4. I mean, excuse me, chapter 21, verse number 4. Again, I'll be reading King James. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom and the soul of the people was much what y'all discouraged. discouraged because of the way and the people spake against who God. and against who God. wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Y'all, this happened 700 years earlier. In Hezekiah's rule. 700 years here, God placed serpents in the wilderness because they were complaining. They were disobedient. They wanted to go back into slavery. And when the serpents came, you know, they were already talking junk about Moses. Ah, oh, Moses is this. Ah, oh, God is this. But as soon as they got in some trouble, who they ran to? Amen. <laughs> Moses, Moses, please, please pray for us. These snakes. And because God is such a loving God. Amen. He told Moses what to do. 700 years later, here we are with Hezekiah. But Hezekiah removed those brass serpents. And then he broke it. The word said he broke them in pieces. The purpose of the brass serpent 700 years later was over. The purpose of it then 
was because of the snakes. But there were no more snakes, y'all. And they still were bowed down to that image. It no longer served its purpose. And they were still bowing down to it. When we are saved, when we are changed, we no longer serve the enemy. We serve God. Amen. There's no need for us to be in the world. Amen, somebody. Amen. No need to be in that lifestyle anymore. We are changed. There's some things, my brothers and sisters, some stuff, some practices in your life that you must change. I know it's tough to agree with, but we got to do it. We got to change. There's some relationships in your life. Let me help somebody. Please, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are some relationships mm -hmm. in your life, some things in your life that must be removed if you are going to change. Amen. Amen. But look at the verse. Hezekiah, he didn't just remove the serpent, y'all. What did he do? The brass serpent. He broke it into pieces. There are some things that we're holding on to that needs to not just be removed, they need to be broken. Amen. Amen. There's some habits that we have that don't need to just be removed, they need to be broken. Because if you move it, you know where it is. Right. So you know how to go back. Break it. Get, no, break it. Hezekiah broke it in pieces. Some things in our lives need to be broken. Some relationships that we have need to be broken. Which leads us to this point. Making a change will require courage. Amen. You gotta have the courage to be able to break that off. Amen, somebody. Amen. You gotta have the courage. And yeah, it's gonna be tough. Because you notice some people in your life that's not good for you. All right, all right. Amen. I'm talking about spiritually. Amen. Amen. There's some people in our lives who are not. Now, I'm not saying, you know, just be like, man, forget you. <laughs> Hi. And <laughs> Amen. Amen. be cordial, but don't let them get in your. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Be mindful. There's some relationships you're going to have to cut off. Hezekiah had the courage to make those changes in order for the transition. God wants to transition you, but he can't because you will not change. My brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell you transition requires change. Verse 5 of our text. We read and we found out that Hezekiah was able to do this because he trusted God. You got to learn how to trust God. When you start being obedient to God, although it may not make any logical sense, amen somebody, amen. still trust that God will make a way out of nowhere. I know some of us may be dating someone who is not saved, don't love God, never mention God, but you're tired of being alone. You may want a boo thing. You want them so bad, but you got to trust God Amen. that he will send you somebody Amen. who will honor God Amen. and who yeah. will respect you as well. My brothers and sisters, God knows the details and circumstances of your life. He knows what you're going through. Why? Because he loves and cares for us. He's got your back. And in due season, if you faint not, you shall what? Read. If you make the right choices, if you be obedient to God, he will take care of you. If you make the right choices with your money, with your job, with, with, with the financial situation in your family, transition requires change. I need to see change. Amen. I need to change. Why? Because I, I can see God opening that door for me. I can see God working in my life. I can see the favor of God all over me. Amen. I can see where God is trying to work miracles that nobody else can do. 
I can see where God is closing doors that nobody else can open. Yeah. I can see that God is doing things that nobody else can perform. Yeah. I can see that he's doing things that only God can do. Yeah. I can see that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think. All God wants me to do is change. Transition requires change. Hezekiah, he held fast to the Lord, verse 6 says. He held on to God. He held on to the principles of God. He didn't care about what anybody said. He did not depart from following him. But Hezekiah kept God's commandments. Hezekiah kept the principles of God. And whatever the Lord commanded Hezekiah to do, he did it. Have you ever been to the point where you tried to please somebody and you knew it was wrong in the eyesight of God? Amen. Amen. Hezekiah stayed close to God. No matter what happened in his life, he stayed with God. And verse 7 says, as we close, because Hezekiah was courageous, because he did what God told him to do. And because he stayed close to God, the Bible says the Lord was with him. The word of God tells us, Lord, I am with you always, even to the end. God said, his son Jesus is a lily in your valley. Whatever you may go through, there's some changes that we have to make, y'all. God is trying to elevate us. He's trying to transition us, but he's waiting for you. Amen. We're sitting Amen. here saying, God, I'm waiting on you, I'm waiting on you. And God is like, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> you know, every time God moved in the word, they had to do something first. Amen. Every time. Think about it. In order for the woman with the issue of blood to get healed, what she had to do? In order for the man to be healed by the Lord, his friends had to do what? Amen. And he, the Lord said, by your faith, you are healed. May God bless you. May he keep you. It's my prayer. Transition, y'all. It requires a change. We're standing in the middle.